In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to help you understand the concept of keyframes. This is for those of you who are new or relatively new to video editing. You will encounter keyframes frequently as you build your video skills. The reason is you can apply a keyframe technique to almost anything that you use. I could apply keyframes into this video clip. I can apply them to a graphic object, to a title. I can apply them to special effects. I can apply them to audio files. There's almost nothing that you deal with that can't be touched by the concept of keyframes. So what are they and how do they work? For many people, the whole concept sounds rather odd and different and intimidating and complex. I'd like to break it down to something simple for you in this tutorial. When you're looking at the video that you just saw, you did not see any true motion. You saw what seemed to be motion because the video is, in this case, was made up of 30 frames per second, 30 separate images that moved so quickly it gave the illusion of motion. Whether you're looking at traditional film or digital editing, it's the same thing. And so what we have is the ability to change the properties of this video or an object or an audio file and set them for any particular frame in our project. And then we can change the values between frames, which is going to change the way the object works. Let me illustrate that. I'm going to take the video and drag it down onto track number one. Now we all automatically have properties assigned to this video. It's full size, it's not transparent, and the video itself, think of the video as a box, it's not moving. The, the different frames in it are showing different places, but the video itself isn't moving at all. But we can change all of those features if we want to using keyframes. I'm going to double click on this and get into the PIP Designer so we can edit it and I can show you how keyframes work. Now I'm in my PIP Designer. When I look at the object settings on the left, I see some of the kinds of values that we can control with a keyframe. Now my best keyframe controls are hidden underneath this preview screen, so I need to click on the little blue arrow to hide or display the timeline. And when I open that up, I see some of the values I can apply to this video clip. Position, scale, opacity, rotation, freeform, and there's a 3D one as well. These are just some of the things I can change. This clip, as I hover over it, is 29 seconds and 5 frames long. And I can change the value of this object. Just think of it as an object, not a movie. I can change the values of all of these things at once or each one independently over the entire length of that. Let's look at an example here. Let's just look at, at position. Right now, my playhead, my time indicator, is at 00. zero. I have time code underneath the preview screen. And so I'm going to set a keyframe. I can do it one of several ways. I can click on the white diamond on the position value. I can click on the white diamond up here. Let's click the white diamond up here. Now it sets a little keyframe, which is a red diamond. So the value of the position is set to 0.5 and 0.5, which means it's centered on the screen. All we're working on is a position value now. So if I play this, nothing seems to change. Why? Well, because basically all I've done is I have locked in the default value. There is no change whatsoever. Let's see what happens if we change the value in another spot. To do that, I need to move to another frame. I'm going to drag over. Let's drag over about five seconds. And I'm going to set another keyframe value. Uh, I'm going to click a diamond by the position value. Now I'm going to take the mouse and I'm going to drag. And I'm going to move my entire video quite a bit to the right. And you notice my X and Y value has changed. The Y is the same. The X is 1.23. So 
So what I've told the computer is I want to, to change not the content of the video, but the properties of the video. And now the property of position is going to be over here. So between my zero second mark and my five second mark, the video will move to the right. And the great thing about PowerDirector is it does all the calculation for every frame between these two points. So if I drag it across, you see each frame has been calculated to move accordingly to move it from left to right. And so when we play the video, the content of the video is the same, but the position of the video is different. And so we've adjusted the video by changing the keyframes. If you want to remove a keyframe, you, I'll turn it to stop, and then I'll click on the keyframe, and with the right mouse button, I can remove it or remove all of them. We'll deal with this menu in future tutorials, but right now I'll just remove them all. That leaves me at the last one, which is off the screen. We'll put it back in the center. Let's try another keyframe value that you might find a little more interesting. Let's try scale. I'm going to move my time indicator back to zero at the beginning, click a scale value. Now I'm going to move it over a few seconds. We'll set another scale value. Now here for scale, I can go height or width, or I can use the mouse to change the scale as well. We'll just shrink it down to a fraction of what it was. Again, we're not changing the content of the object that we're keyframing. We're changing the value of the scale. So now as we play this, we find that we're going to have the same video showing the same stuff, only it shrinks. And you have the opportunity to combine values. We can have it shrink and move at the same time. We can have it shrink and move to transparent at the same time. But this basically is the concept. Now, the distance between the keyframes controls how apparently fast that action is. If I stop the video and I take the second keyframe and click on it and move it way to the other end, I haven't changed the value, but I've changed the frame where that value is set. So now what will happen, the farther apart they are, the slower the apparent motion. When we play this in this case, we're going to find that it seems to shrink a lot more slowly, basically because you have more frames between the first value and the last value. And so that's the significance of where the keyframes are in your project. And you can set them and move them all you want. You can add them and delete them as much as you care. That's an example of how the keyframe controls not the content of your video or your object or your title, but it controls the properties that help you be both creative and precise in building your projects in CyberLink PowerDirector.